Let me have it. If you disagree with these rankings, let me know why and which teams, but also tell me your NFL Week 9 power rankings because zero, it's time for this. Yeah, baby, here it is. Let's do it. The Wooly Bully. Wednesday, NFL Week 9. Power rankings. Uh, how many teams do you think I did this week, Eric? I think you did. 69. Um, is that mathematically possible? Yep. He's going to rank every team three times Yep. Uh, just to make sure he gets all 69 yep. in. You're I think, 100% right. I think you're going to go with a, a hard 19. Ooh, a hard 19. Like a super hard 19. Ooh. Like the hardest 19 possible. You're not sounding overly confident here. Uh, 17? Man. Ooh. You blow it. You blow it. 16. Yes. <laughs> All right. 16, 16 baby. Good. We went 16 deep. Coming in at number 16, I've got the Brownies of Cleveland at four and four. Broken, battered. Very. Emotionally now with Odell Beckham Jr. and and the issues with Baker Mayfield. Uh, we'll play that sound a little bit later. Baker talking about OBJ's father calling him out via YouTube. Um, yeah, and they're just physically broken. Like Baker's broken and all these different things. Oh I no, our kinda, table. I kind of wonder. Broken. I kind of wonder to myself if Baker would be better off in his contract. You're just not playing at all instead of being injured, going out there sucking. And use it as an excuse. Like, oh man, the shoulder. Yeah. Con- you know, go ahead and maybe franchise They want you to be tough. They want you to go out there and play. He feels the obligation. He's trying to earn the contract. But like, are you ultimately going to hurt yourself when you consistently put up like 10 points? Yeah, he's just very average. I, I think Baker Mayfield's. But, but we, look, we've seen the average quarterbacks get paid as well. Maybe even the guys that can play slightly above average at times, like the Kirk Cousins of the world. But I think he's I think he's average when healthy, like when not healthy and his throwing shoulders all torn apart. He's bad. He's he's definitely below no average. No question. I've got the Steelers who just knocked off the Browns at 15. I still don't think they're a very good football team because they don't have a good quarterback. But uh, they're at 15. The Chiefs are at 14. Jury's still out on them. They might be able to get a win to go above 500 this week without Aaron Rodgers taking on the Packers. The bungholes, and yes, they are the bungholes of Cincinnati after losing to the Jets. Yes, the Jets. Man, they go man. from the first place, but yeah. respect on the Bengals' true. name, to being the bungholes again because Mike White and the Jets beat them. Now they're 5-3. and three, They're at 13. This could have been a situation, though, where the bungholes are just kind of feeling themselves. You know, they were feeling themselves. They were eating the yeah. cheese. Like Bill Parcells would say, they weren't taking the Jets very seriously, and they stubbed their toe. And I'm interested to see how they bounce back. Me too, because they looked so impressive against Lamar Jackson and the Ravens in Baltimore just a couple of weeks ago. Their defense, I mean, we know about Joe Burrow, the Jamar Chase connection, all of it. But they are back to being the bungholes, and um, I kind of understand it. The problem is, is the AFC, it's like... Who is legitimate? Like, you feel probably solid about the Bills, and then after that, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, there's I, a lot of question marks. I don't know. A lot of holes. A lot of holes right. in that AFC. By the way. Um, that need to be filled. The and, and the and Cincinnati lost to the Jets while Mike White was throwing the ball, like, two air yards at a time. <laughs> it was, like, historically low. It was just everything was checked down, boom, All dump off. All I know off. is he led the, the league in receiving or passing last I week. know, uh, but, like, well, would have been amazing. A the largest, like a huge percentage of his his uh, his yards were done after the catch was already made. Just a lot of yak action. I got the Chargers at twelve after uh, a loss to the Patriots. I still like the Chargers, but man, Justin Herbert, he must have nightmares about Bill Belichick's defense. They beat him forty-five to zip last week, and he made Justin Herbert look very mortal. Uh, 45 to zip last year. Last year, and then yeah. this past week, he made him look very mortal again in a close game. But the Chargers lose. They drop to 4-3. and three. And at 11, the biggest rise maybe in the power rankings, the Patriots. I've got it 4-4. Four and four. The Patriots are quietly playing really good football. And I, I got to tell you, I think Mac Jones is getting better every single week. He is. He is. And the Patriots are. And, I mean, even it really goes back to the Cowboys game, kind of, where it's like, yes, they lost the game. And but they they looked really good in the loss. It was like okay, dang the Patriots. I mean they gave us everything we had, and so and then after that they've shown okay they're ready to go dominate. They smacked the Jets again. 
um, and then be doing what they did to to Justin Herbert and the Chargers. That was a solid win. Yeah, the Patriots might be kind of floating around there and in the AFC. A wide again, open AFC. Just, they might make some noise. No doubt. If they can get in as a wild card team, they get a friendly matchup. They could win a playoff game this year, potentially. Number 10, uh, and this team has a huge, a huge question mark next to them, is the Titans at 6-2. and two. A Derrick Henry-sized question mark? A Derrick Henry monster-sized question mark. Can Jeremy McNichols and Adrian Peterson end up filling the void that is Derrick Henry? Look, I don't know that anybody can fill those shoes. Maybe some would disagree because there is the running backs don't matter out there. But this is now going to show us you know, how good is Ryan Tannehill? Is that team really predicated off of what Derrick Henry is able to provide that offense? Will Julio Jones ever be able to be healthy and provide that team what they were hoping they would get, they would get from him when they made that addition? A.J. Brown is certainly ascending and being that kind of playmaker we thought he could be this year. But the Titans... I've now got it number 10 at 6-2, and two, and the jury is really out on them. We'll have to see how they look moving forward. Yeah, I'm excited to see sort of what the impact is. It's a bummer for Derrick Henry, obviously, but like just, uh, I mean, he's the best running back in the sport, and, and their offense is predicated around him running the ball, teams loading the box, and then going play action all over, all over your face. And A.J. Brown has thrived that way, and so it'll be interesting. Now you have Adrian Peterson in there. Our team's going to be respecting the run, loading up the box as much for Tannehill and A.J. Brown. You, I mean, the obvious answer is no, and so how does the Titans' offense look from there? Um, I mean, I think they're still going to be respectable, uh, but will it be to the same level? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Vegas would tell you, like, it's not a, too much of a difference. Like, what they've what they've changed the line for the Titans game this weekend with Derrick Henry being out. It, ha it wasn't like astronomical. So I don't know, man, it's going to be uh, an interesting experiment watching the Titans unfold offensively. I've got the si the saints of new Orleans at number nine at five and two big win, big time win for the saints and Jameis done for the year. I feel like that makes you like them more. It does actually. Uh, surprisingly, not necessarily Taysom Hill, but I think a Trevor Simeon might be just what that team needs. A bus driver type of quarterback that is not going to get in their way because they do have a, a great running game now. Mark Ingram looked good. Mark Ingram was looked fired up. really good to be back with the Saints. And defensively, they looked like, okay, that's the Saints defense that we expected. Uh, that we saw week one against Green Bay and haven't really seen consistently since. So if they can carry that defensive effort week to week and run the football like that with Ingram and Kamara like they did a couple years ago, I mean, we saw Breeze kind of be that bus driver and just make a couple of throws here and there. You sprinkled Dinkle a little gadget from Taysom Hill and his running ability. You know, the Saints, they're an interesting team in the NFC with a big win over the Bucks. And then I got their 80s coming in at number eight. At five and two, clearly they're they're facing a lot of adversity again this week. But they've been the team that has been able to power through adversity with the John Gruden situation and the team galvanizing around Rich Bisaccia. Now they're dealing with the Henry Rugg situation, releasing him. How do they bounce back from that? Well, they have Rich Bisaccia, who Anthony McFarland deems, uh, or Booger McFarland deems a top five foxhole guy. Top five in the history of foxholes. Uh that's all uh, that's all you need to know. All you need to know. Booger McFarlane thinks Bisacci is top five foxhole guy ever. The, the Raiders are going to be just fine. They should actually be the favorites in the AFC. What are we talking about? You're right. And look, Derek Carr is playing great football. He really is, and he deserves that credit. Number seven, I've got the Ravens of Baltimore at five and two. Uh, they are coming off their bye week. We will see how they look. But still, Lamar Jackson ha has really been fantastic the majority of the time this year. They're well coached. The Ravens are always a team that's in the mix there in the AFC. And then I've got the Bills as the best team. In the AFC, the highest ranked right now at number six. It's wild to consider. At five and two. The five best teams of the league are in the NFC. My top five is all NFC. At number five, I've got the defending world champion Bucks at six and two after their loss to the Saints. I still think the Bucks are very good, but that's a team that plays them well and they lost on the road. At number four, I've got the Cardinals at seven and one. Uh, they almost came all the way back and had a great win against Green Bay. Unfortunately, a play here, a play there. You had the, the issue with A.J. Green not turning around, looking for the ball, didn't hear the check, ends up being an interception, or else they'd still be number one, but I've got them down to number four. I've got the Packers at three 
okay, at 7-1. and one. I still think, and this week, we'll see how good that football team really is this week without Aaron Rodgers. Much like we did with the Cowboys without Dak. Like, how good is this team without their quarterback? The quarterback can mask a lot, but the Packers without Aaron Rodgers, I, I'm interested because I still don't know just how good is that defense, right? How good is that running game with Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon? And their ability to win without Devontae Adams has been truly outstanding, but that's going to take a huge hit without the reigning MVP, uh, Aaron Rodgers. At number two, I've got the Rams. <laughs> you know what that means. Oh, at man. seven and one. The blue star flu. It is flu season, and ladies and gentlemen. Number one. I have not done this all year. This is the first time we've got a new number one, but they've earned it. The Dallas Cowboys are number one, the best team in football right now in the Wooly Bully Week 9 NFL Power Rankings. You go into Minnesota on Sunday night football, a hostile environment, your left tackle goes down, you don't have your starting quarterback, and you come out with a gutsy win. Mind you, you hold an offense that had been playing exceptionally well to 16 bleeping points, and Justin Jefferson to two catches and 21 yards. The Dallas Cowboys are the best team in the National Football League right now, today. They are number one in the Wooly Bully Week 9 NFL Power Rankings. I would have them as my top team as well. So we are simpatico there. This is the this this victory over the Vikings Sunday night was more so than any victory this season for the Cowboys, the one that made me feel the most like, yeah, this team is special. This team can really do something awesome. And I'm with you, man. I think we are looking at the best team in the sport residing right here in Dallas. And that is just insane to even think about. And the Titans, the reason I have them ranked so low is because, well, Derrick Henry, maybe their best player just went went down. So I've got them at 10. That, and, that's, that's why I have them so low, 903. They have lost to the Jets this year and stuff like that. That's true.